Hey everyone, welcome to another episode with Bell Vista Studios. We have Victoria, Kim and myself, Hannah. And today is an exciting episode. What we're gonna do is we're going to do abstract words related to human-centered design. So what we do, it's a bit random, but it always sort of brings out some really cool advice and tips from our team and puts us under a lot of pressure, I think. We're usually sweating bullets while we're doing it. But what we're gonna do is Victoria is gonna throw out random words from a generator. And Kim and I are going to, using those words as inspiration, share with you insight and tips to help you be a better instructional designer and use human-centered design for your projects. So we're pretty excited. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy doing these sort of ones. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm gonna pass over to Victoria because she is the word generator gal and she is <laughs> going to choose who answers the, or who That's provides a tip. For the <laughs> We're a generator gal. <laughs> I'll add it. All right, Hannah, um, you're going to go first. Oh, thanks. And your first word is metal. Oh, metal, hey. So metal makes me think of like shiny things because metal is usually quite shiny. And it makes me think that like your end user or the people that you're creating a solution for don't always need like a shiny product with bells and whistles. I think it's more important to think about what do they actually need and what will actually make a difference to their life. So if you're applying human centered design, you find out what's going to be the best for them rather than thinking, I want to create this shiny, cool bells and whistle type solution. So yeah, my advice would be to find out from them what they need and don't put your own filter of what's going to be the best in front of that. <laughs> Very supportive for a sponsor there. <laughs> um, Kim, your word is maximum. Maximum. You can definitely have a better maximum impact if you use human centered design. Human-centered design allows you to maximize return on investment, maximize the investment you make in a training solution, maximize the change in behavior um, that you would expect or create from your solution when people interact with the learning experience. And that's because you solve the right problem. So quite often we will just be given a training solution and be like, go make this and start with slides and all this kind of thing. But because we put users at the heart of our solution and through the human centered design process, you ask the right questions to understand the true problem, which then helps you move the needle in all the things that training can enhance and maximize. Well, it was maximum, not maximize, but I'll let it slide. <laughs> Big <laughs> <laughs> savage today. Okay, I'm gonna change that answer then. <laughs> um, all right, Hannah, your word is cap. Cap. Cap makes me think about like wearing a cap, like a hat. And I think in all situations, you should be wearing a cap that like gives you a lens of like looking at what the environment is and what's happening in your learner's environment. So rather than just like focusing on what you're doing in front of your laptop or computer, I think we should always have a cap in our head <laughs> that gets us to like put ourselves in the shoes of the learner and understand what their context is like so that we can create a solution that better meets their needs and aligns with them. We should get caps. Kim's got one, but. <laughs> You said that you didn't want one. <laughs> yeah, they don't really suit my head shape, but <laughs> look, if it helps us design better. Tell us more about that, Hannah. <laughs> Not on camera, Kim. <laughs> um, all right, Kim, your next word is wife. Wife. I think... Mm. Traditionally, I think you become a wife through marriage and marriage is like a partnership, my understanding of that. So I think as an instructional designer, 
with a human centered design approach, you're a partner on the journey of creating the solution. And that means that you don't have to be the expert or have all the answers. You work with your partners to get you there. And those partners might be stakeholders and they might be learners, for example. Mm -hmm. Make, Make them your wifey. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. All right. Um, Hannah, your next word is publications. Publication. Um, oh, I am stuck. <laughs> um, so publication makes me think of like publishing something out into the world. So like you're putting it out, publishing it. And I think that before we ever publish a learning solution, we should always get feedback from our end users because they will provide us with insight that could either provide you with minor updates that can really improve your solution or completely change the direction of it. But I think we should always be getting feedback before we publish any solution because they're ultimately the ones that are going to be impacted by it and using it. Okay, so it needs to be harder than that next time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Your word is domestic. Domestic. Oh, okay. <laughs> For some reason, domestic brings up domestic animals, and we all know how much of a fan I am of them. <laughs> and, but people really freaking love their domestic animals. And I feel like as an instructional designer, you should have that same love for your learners and uh -huh. see how that influences the solutions that you create. What about for you when you hate animals? That's when I put a hat <laughs> on and I try to <laughs> empathize <laughs> and assume what it might be like to love a little puppy or a cat. <laughs> I love them from afar. I just don't want them jumping on me and all that jazz. Now all the comments will be filled with <laughs> I appreciate them and I respect them, just so you know. Good to know. <laughs> all right, Hannah, your word is eyebrow. <laughs> um eyebrow, eyebrow. Is... <laughs> so monobrow is what <laughs> <laughs> I'll take monobrow as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, eyebrow is like a an eyebrow movement can be like a micro expression. So it makes me think about if you're ever interviewing users or observing users, like don't always focus on what they're saying, focus on what is happening on their face as well, because people might say something, but something else could be happening internally. And a micro expression like a raise of an eyebrow or something like that on their face could reveal a lot of things. So just notice things like that and question it because it could reveal something that you would never know without asking that. It's a good answer. Oh, thanks Vic. I got some good <laughs> word of affirmation. First one of the video. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was waiting for it. <laughs> All right, Kim, your word is laser. Laser. Well, I think laser is like very precise and cuts through things to me. So, and it provides clarity like laser vision. So I think when we start with our human centered design process, we have that success statement or a project goal. And that is, an approved statement of what we are trying to achieve. And it's co-created by anyone that could say no at any point throughout the project. And when that's approved, it is your laser focus. It is your clarity. It is your precision. So that at all points throughout the project, it, there is minimal deviation from that because we're always saying, help me understand how that decision or action will help us achieve 
our laser or our success statement. And if it doesn't, we need to understand that and adapt or don't do it because we have agreed that this is where we're headed and this is the journey we're on. Great. Um, Great. Hannah, your next word is bishop. What? Bishop? <laughs> oh, bishop. Okay. <laughs> I always seem to get religious words. Interesting. What else have you had that's been religious? You gave me God last time. Oh. Uh, new video, so. <laughs> <laughs> new day. <laughs> it's in the past. <laughs> um, so the bishop to me is like someone that people look up to and respect and like listen to their guidance. And I think we should, rather than making like subject matter experts or the client the only bishop that you're sort of looking at I think we also need to include the learners in that group so like rather than just focusing on that bishop which could be the subject matter expert or the client you really need to like involve the learners and put them up there with the bishop so that you're incorporating everyone in your design because the learners can add just as much value I believe as the subject matter expert or the client True. Um, Kim, your word is <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> Kim. <laughs> um, good luck, Vic. You'll never stump us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna find something. <laughs> no. Is this the last Na word as well? Navy. Maybe. Navy. Oh, navy, the color. The color yeah. or the, like the sea navy. Oh, <laughs> look at you just implanted my answer. Give me a hint, Vic. <laughs> Maybe I can use this against you. <laughs> navy. Uh, I think, okay, so I'm going to go to color theory and blue or navy is traditionally associated with trust. Mm. So the color meaning when we see it, and that's why we see institutions, banks, um, places like that, a lot of their logos are blue because they're like, trust us, spend all your money with us. <laughs> um, so what I would say with that essence of trust is to trust the human-centered design process will get you the better results that you want as an instructional designer. All right, now what about one for the sea navy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Do you want one for the sea navy? Um, the sea navy. I don't actually know, I think they call that, but I can't think of how else to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like the other one was like go out on the trust the process and now like, here's a stupid thing about the navy that I'm like, yeah, that I've been inspired by. Um, I don't really know much about the navy. Are they? Oh, do you know what I do know? That David Goggins guy. He went through. He wasn't he a Navy SEAL or something? Yeah. He was like hardcore. I feel like Hannah, I'm gonna like throw to you now because you're like the biggest fan of his like mindset. And if you're listening, David Goggins, <laughs> you're amazing. Okay, so <laughs> that was it, Ali. You so you do the slam dunk now with the Navy SEAL response. Um. Well, I think like David Goggins and being a Navy SEAL, he had to be like super dedicated. Like he was like super focused and dedicated and like nothing would stop him from reaching his goals. Like he's super inspiring in that way. So I think we all need to be like super dedicated to our learner and do like everything in our power to make the solution the best for them. Even if that puts us through discomfort or pain or doing things differently to the way we usually do things, just like we need to have them as our goal. And yeah. Yeah. I think through that we can be like David Goggins in the human centered design arena. Well played. He's a legend. <laughs> I hope he watches this. <laughs> it's possible. 
Um, well, we're at 10 words. Do you guys want to do a couple more? No, no. <laughs> I was like, is there ever a ending? <laughs> Great. Well, thank you Great so way. much. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and watching and putting up with a bit of our antics in that one. <laughs> We're all a bit cray today, but that's good, I think. It adds a little bit of our personality to our videos. Um, I hope you got some insight from that, which I think you would have because the things we've spoken about, like, will add value if you take action on it. And, like, we love human-centered design and it has, like, made our life easier and, like, we know that it works. It works for our project. So please, like, listen to what we've spoken about look in the description we have human centered design opportunities for you on our creator hub so there's like a playbook there's a course you can do um so yeah check out that and have a look at the opportunities available because we just think it's awesome and there's lots of other people that think it's awesome too so join our tribe and learn more about it and add a better impact to the solutions that you create um but yeah thank you so much for being a part of our community and listening and watching what's up awesome human Thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of myself and the Bell Vista Studios team for continuously choosing to learn with us. We really appreciate it. If the tips and the insights and the context resonate with you and you want to take your skills to the next level or you want to make your life way easier, you will love our Creator Hub. The Creator Hub is a place for people like you and us, basically, it's the stuff that we use internally at Bell Vista Studios and then we just share it publicly with you. The Creator Hub is created by instructional designers for instructional designers and what you'll love there at the moment is we've got a quiz, Could I Be a Better Instructional Designer, that has so much tips in the feedback if you're interested in human-centered design or just taking your skills to the next level in terms of the solutions you're creating, the problems you want to solve, but in there as well, Aren't we cute? That's us. Um, but we've got the coaching courses, freebies, give us gratitude, and also we've got some templates. And basically they're always around the lens of learning experience design, instructional design, and e-learning. So a human-centered design focus is very much what we're about at Bell Vista Studio. So putting your learners at the heart of a solution and creating something for their needs. So there's the human-centered design stuff and then we've also got the business stuff. So this is the stuff they don't teach you about when you wanna become a freelancer or a consultant in the instructional design world. So go check it out. The link is in the description. You can check out everything that is available for you. Thank you for choosing to learn with us. Continuously invest in your skills. You will be rewarded as an instructional designer. Share this stuff, share it with other people because when we are better instructional designers, we create better solutions that create better humans that create a better world. So we have a very important role and I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Have an awesome day.